you scared? We're all scared. You'd have to be crazy not to be scared. Hello, I'm Mr. Hoven, and welcome to our next online lesson. Today we're going to be talking about moving towards revolution. So England taking more control, the colonists becoming a little upset with that, and tensions rising. People are starting to get afraid, not sure what's going to happen next. Maybe a revolt is in the future. Let's get started. So immediately following their victory over the French, England closes the Ohio Valley to settlers as promised to their Native American allies. It was one of those conditions uh, under the Treaty of Paris. Colonists, however, ignore England's promise. They'd be like, England must be tripping, man. We ain't going to listen to that. And they begin moving into the Ohio Valley. This sparks a war between the colonists and natives known as Pontiac's Rebellion. Pontiac was a chief that led a rebellion against the settlers there. The rebellion is put down, but the war convinced England to issue the Proclamation of 1763. And this officially closes the frontier to new settlement. With their victory, England is now in control of huge amounts of land. However, the money spent to win the war created a huge debt that needed to be recovered. England's parliament, which was England's government, believes that the colonies have an obligation to help England regain money spent on a war that, was, that benefited them as well as England. The war was fought in the New World for the colonies, so they think that the colonies should be footing most of the bill. So the English government begins taxing the colonies heavily on many different goods. And the first act, or the first tax, is the Sugar Act of 1764. And this placed a duty or tax on molasses from the West Indies. Colonists smuggle molasses or bribe tax collectors in response to this. England issues writs of assistance or search warrants to help find these lawbreakers. And officials could look into ships and in homes to find the smuggled goods. The next act was the Stamp Act of 1765, and this required that stamps purchased from the British government be, pla be placed on all legal documents like wills, deeds, birth certificates, etc., and this was an internal tax having nothing to do with trade. It caused outrage among the colonists. Basically, any legal document had a stamp placed on it, and there was a tax attached to that. So the colonists were now paying for many of the forms or the documents that used to be tax-free. So it really, really upset them. The next act was the Quartering Act of 1765. Boo! To help enforce these laws that they were implementing, so like the Sugar Act and the Stamp Act, British troops are stationed in North America. These individuals, 10,000 of them, needed food and shelter. This law is this law ordered the colonists to provide troops with food and a place to live so troops could stay in your home. They could eat your food because England says it's okay. That's the Quartering Act. Giving soldiers quarter living space in your home. The next series of acts were the Townsend Acts of 1767. This placed a tax on popular imports, so if you're importing goods from another country, such as tea, paper, glass, and paint, colonists begin smuggling tea from other countries. So the Townsend Act, they place a tax on imports, so anything you bring into your country not produced there, there's a tax on them now. The Townsend Act was followed by the Tea Act, and this really enraged the colonists. And this created a monopoly, total control over tea. Tea was sold by the British for less than smuggled tea, causing smugglers to lose business. So basically, there's with a monopoly, British has control, complete control over the tea industry. So they undercut all the smugglers, so the smugglers go out of business, and then they'll just jack up their prices. So it's a way of eliminating any competition, whether it be legal or illegal. And again, this really upsets the colonists. So these laws are being passed in England without the colonists having a representative presence to voice opinion or cast a vote. So all of these taxes were happening without uh, the colonists having representation in the government. And this leads to the colonists argument this leads to the colonists arguing there should be no taxation without representation. And hopefully that's a very familiar phrase that you've heard maybe in fourth grade or sometime before. The colonists want to have representation in the government if they're going to be taxed. And if that is not met, problems will arise. That about wraps things up. We'll see you next time.